Hey guys, it's HodgePodge here, and today we're going to continue to celebrate 20 years of Walking with Dinosaurs by reviewing an animal that appeared in the second episode of the documentary series, Time of the Titans. I chose Diplodocus, and to represent that animal, today we are reviewing the Safari LTD Diplodocus figure from 2017. Now, Diplodocus means double beam, and it was a sauropod dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic period in what is now North America, specifically the Morrison Formation, 155 to 150 million years ago. Okay, so I've wanted to review this figure for quite a while, but I held off of it for uh, two reasons. One is that I wanted to save it for this uh, 20 year anniversary special. And two, this figure is huge. It's incredibly long and annoying to film, but we'll get through it because I have quite a lot of things to say about this figure. So let's start off with the head sculpt. Now the head sculpt I think is actually the weakest part of this entire figure as it's the the paint spills over a lot and the eye is just one black dot i would have preferred if we had more of a yellow iris kind of like um a bird eye rather than just the black dot you can also see there's also a bit of uh, i don't know if you could say that shrink wrapping around the eye or if that's just how the plastic's molded you can see that the nostrils have in fact been constructed in the right place at the tip of the snout, not on the top of the head where we used to think they would be. The interior of the mouth is very messy though, unfortunately. It, you can see the pink tongue sculpted in there and the teeth looking quite silly. Uh, let me just tilt the whole thing around. Um, on this side it's also quite messy, the teeth. They're painted quite messily. It's unfortunate, but like I said, that's easily the worst part of this figure. The rest of it's pretty great. So now going down, you'll notice what stands out most about this figure is the color scheme. Bright sky blue with a white underbelly. And it looks very, very cool. And it really makes it stand out on a shelf. You can see these tiny, thin um, spines going down. Well, the spine. Then when we get to uh, down the neck, when we get to where we get to the shoulders, we can see we've got some skin folds here. They're very faint, but they are there. It's very nice. The scale detail on this figure is quite odd in that it doesn't really, there isn't a whole lot of it, but an animal this large, it would appear as leathery skin anyway, so it doesn't bother me that much. When we get down to the, the legs here, see we've got some creases here in the skin. And we get down to the accurate feet. Just one toe claw and the others, the other four toes form kind of like a hoof made out of toes, which is kind of gross, but that's how they work. And I like how they're long and held erect. And the pose on this animal is really, really well done. They're, they're standing tall. They're not squatting because they could support their own weight. It's really well done. Now the paint when we get to the midsection is a little weird on mine. We can see the blue kind of fading into the white very awkwardly. It looks a bit messy. Don't know if that's meant an airbrushing problem. I think from what I've seen it's just on mine. Now, excuse me while I flip the whole thing over. Um, on this side it's also present but not so much. It's nice and wide as well. Like not overly fat but it looks like it doesn't look malnourished at all. And the pose, like I said, is very dynamic. Uh, the white underbelly is a nice touch, like I said. The coloration is very cool. And these spines, they are so thin, I actually brushed them through my hair and it yanked some of my hair out. That, that's what I get for being curious, I guess. <laughs> and like I said before, the blue paint spills into the white on the neck here. But again, that's just on mine, I think. Now we get to, uh, with the pubic boot, there isn't a cloaca, interestingly enough. Uh, the back feet as well, accurate. Five toes, only three of them have the claws on them. Although there are 
painted on the two little vestigial toes, which is odd, but I, I can't remember off the top of my head if that's wrong or not. I don't think it is. Then we get to the business end of Diplodocus, and that's the tail. And the tail on this figure is accurately incredibly long, and you can see the spines go all the way down to the tip, or not the tip, to about here. The tip is in fact a whip, and this is what it used to protect itself against predators like Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Torvosaurus. Um, and this is very flexible plastic as you can see, and it curls over itself, so uh, if you were to um, stretch this all the way out it would be considerably longer. So I think this is a really cool way of doing it. So I really appreciate that. So I think that's all I have to say about this figure, so let's measure up this enormous figure. So in terms of the length, um, 46 centimeters exactly, that's very handy. And in terms of the height, just over 12 centimeters at the top of the head. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this. If you want to see my review of the episode Time of the Titans, uh, there will be a link to it in the end card coming up in a moment. Thank you all so much for watching this. If you want your own Diplodocus from Safari, go to everythingdinosaur.com. Amazing service. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye now.